Hi Taurus, Sun, Moon, and Ascendant. This is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your June 2023 full moon reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps me get seen by the YouTube algorithm, and you guys are helping me out so very much. So thank you so very much. If you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will all be listed in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. This cleanse and meditation will be accompanied by a loud sound. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into this safe and loving space. So let's see the energy we need to be mindful of during this time. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels and spirit guides. Ooh. So the Ten of Pentacles reversed. This could be, I don't want to, it's not alarmist, but it can be a generational curse, like generational money issues or, you know, prosperity issues that come forward. And it's really made blazingly obvious. Like there's something here where you would think like, oh, we just don't do that. Or, oh, we, we just don't get to be rich. Or we don't still get to be happy. Or we always have to struggle type of thing. Those type of statements are going to be coming up we need to be mindful about them. We need to be mindful of like, why does that get to be my reality? And, and who said we don't get to be, you know, prosperous and, and wealthy. Also be very mindful of, of being envious of other people. We can really make up in our heads, like how great everybody else's life is, but you scratch the surface just a little bit and it is surprising what you will find underneath. So here with the 10 of pentacles reverse, just be very aware of this. Be very aware of things that we think, oh, I'll never get to be, or it will never get to be, or people like me don't get to, those type of blanket statements. We're really going to be rebelling against them, but they weigh heavy on us. So just be aware. And also don't think everybody else has it better than you, because again, you'll be surprised. Let's see what spirit has to say. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. This is energy. This moon, I mean, the full moon is a beacon. It can bring us a lot of energy. I love the moon here. You know, it's a crescent moon, but it almost looks like it's holding the moon in itself. So there's a lot of energy coming from this moon to us. We might feel very energized from it, but we can also feel very overwhelmed depending on your sensitivity and where you are in your, you know, spiritual development story, right? We can feel the energy of this moon, which is in 13 degrees, 18 minutes, Sagittarius. We can feel this astoundingly intensely. You know, Sagittarius is the sign that's linked to independence, it's freedom, it's enthusiasm, it's idealism. It's wanting to go beyond what is to find out what can be. And that's in all aspects of life. So our spirit can really be pushing us in directions, to, you know, to kind of like throw off an old cloak that no longer fits. And we'd be like, am I ready for this? You know, that can be a really big question for us during this time. So let's see what spirit has to say through the tarot. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly angels. Mm, okay. And spirit guides, angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Okay. So what's really funny here and why I laugh is because, yes, we have the Ten of Pentacles reversed again, but we have 
the high priestess reverse. We want things to be clear. We would like them to be, you know, black and white, white page, black print, written in nice, clear, bold font that can be easily followed along with. This isn't the moon for that, and that can really frustrate us. Okay, so just getting at that out there and saying it, it's like, yeah, you know what? I wish things were clearer. That can be huge for us. That can be just like liberating. So just be aware of that because the full moon in Sagittarius, it shines a light. It is a beacon. This moon, you know, is really letting us see clearly. And that's the whole thing. It's a psychic moon. Like there's a lot that we're, you know, stepping into during this time. And we really want things to be a lot more easily spelled out. So the intensity of what we're getting feels like it's closing doors. How can I get to where I want to be if the emotions are so intense, if everything's so intense, if I'm overwhelmed? There's victory for us. This full moon leads us to victory. It does. But we're going to have a tendency not to turn inward, but to say, I want to go outward. I want to see what everybody else is saying, everybody else is doing, everybody else is thinking. And that's going to be one of the things that can be rather detrimental to us during this time. So let's talk about this full moon in Sagittarius. So this full moon, you know, it's it's in, what is it? It's June 4th, right, is the full moon. And then it's on the 3rd also, if depending on where you are, are in the world, the 3rd or the 4th. So this moon brings us into Gemini energy. It is Gemini energy. Mercury is moving very quickly through the month of June. Mercury rules Gemini. So we're getting a lot of very quick, very powerful energy coming at us. We like to take things a lot slower, a lot more steady, a lot more grounded, especially if you're a Taurus with strong Gemini in your chart or you're a Taurus born on the cusp of Gemini, you can be finding that there's like a fight going on inside of you between the quickness of the movement of everything, all the knowledge, all the information, and you being able to digest it, to really take it all in. Now, Sagittarius also is a searcher of truth. It's honor, it's integrity. It's very linked to the law of our belief system, the law and our belief system, but also the law of our belief system. This has to do with truth, not necessarily justice. That's more Libra's, you know, frame mind. But here for us, it's going to be truth. You know, what is the truth of the scenario? What is the truth for me? How do I dive deeper into this? And that's going to be a very, very, very powerful thing for us. And we're going to be seeing this because our belief systems can be shaken over the next few months. So just be aware. So as this full moon is letting us see more clearly, it is also bringing us to Neptune. Now, Neptune is all about unconditional love and oneness. Now, Neptune is squared the galactic center, and this increases our psychic development and insight into our dreams. So again, the veil is being lifted. Do we want it to be lifted? No, we don't. We're having enough to do right now. But the moon says to us, whether you like it or whether you don't, you know, whatever you do with this information, that's completely up to you, but I'm bringing it forward. Now, the South Lunar Node is in Scorpio. This is the collective past. This is big secrets and toxic energy that's coming to the surface. And what we're going to be seeing with that is that it's really hitting things financially. Not necessarily for us, though it can be, and I'm not saying this to make us worried, but it's making us look at things money-wise a lot more prudently, a lot more, you know, kind of succinctly within ourselves. And we're going to be looking during this time at uh, what is it that's holding me back from the wealth that I want in my life? What is it that's keeping me from moving forward the way that I want to be? There is a sense here that we want to go out and we want to share everything with everyone. And yet Spirit's saying, take care of you first. Feed your table first. You know, make sure your belly is fed first. That type of energy where it's like, take care of yourself, then you can help everybody else. But if you're so busy helping everybody else that you forget to take care of you and you faint in the middle of it all, that's not going to be good for you. So here with the Ten of Pentacles reverse, there is also a sense here of some sort of generational, I want to say curse, because I mean, well, it's dramatic, isn't it? But it's the way everybody sees this energy. Now it's, it's come to a collective consciousness. But with the Ten of Pentacles, it's like, okay, what's our blockages? What is our blockage around money? What's keeping us from moving forward the way that we want to? And what we're going to be seeing here is Spirit's going to be telling us in no uncertain terms, okay, this is what you're hung up about. This is what's not working for you. Listen to your dreams. Listen to your intuition. Listen to yourself. You're going to be 
rather on point with things, even though you don't think, you know, much is going on or you don't, you know, know the connection or you're just, you know, stinking frustrated. <laughs> There's a sense that you are entering into Taurus, a real time of transformation around money. It brings us in the six of wands. Why I see this as positive is because we're looking at blockages held us back. The six of wands is celebration. Now I'm celebrating me to move forward. Now I'm seeing what I need, what I want, what I desire for myself, what is important to me and what isn't. We're starting to celebrate us. It's slow. It's slow go. But there really is a sense of celebration, of beauty, of intensity, of power. Now Uranus is here as well. Now Uranus is conjunct Mercury. And why this is important is important is Uranus is the higher mind. So it's the higher aspect of Mercury. So this brings sudden and surprising news and brilliant ideas into our lives. Uranus is the sword of truth. What we're going to be seeing here is that there's a lot of, of knowledge because Uranus is moving into a new, is, is tangled in my words, is moving to a new degrees where it hasn't been for 84 years. And so we're going to see a lot of people, including ourselves, awakening. We're going to see a lot of power guiding us. And now there's a transit. Jupiter is now in transit. Jupiter is conjunct the North Lunar Nodes. This is three degrees of Taurus. Wherever you have Taurus in your chart, right? And especially if it is your sun, your moon, or your ascendant, which I would assume it is if you're watching this or you know somebody who it is, this brings you very, very positive connections with your higher dreams and connections with nature in a way that hasn't been done in, in lifetimes. There's a real sense during this time of people going back to the roots of things, of saying, you know what, this is what I want. This is what's more clear for me. This is what's more prosperous for me. And it might look like at times, Taurus, you're walking away from easy money. And people will be like, why are you doing that? This isn't saying, you know, qu quit your job and join the circus type of thing. But this is saying that we're going to be looking at things and saying, what is fulfilling to me? What is purposeful to me? What is powerful to me? The high priestess, we're not going to be looking too much deeper into things. The veil isn't being lifted from our eyes. Actually, we're wanting to pull the veil back over our eyes and say, I've seen too much. You know, it's, it's a little bit too intense. So just be aware of that with the high priestess energy that we can really sit there and be like, okay, I'm overwhelmed. Okay. You know, how do I move forward? Where do I need to be? What's important for me? You know, what do I desire type of deal? There is also a sense here of things not going as we had planned. And that's a very much in, um, cared, cared one. That's very much in our story. You know, she tries to control things by having her son become brilliant, right? She doesn't deem him very, you know, gifted. And so she makes this potion and she's going to make him the, the best at everything. But what happens is the poor serving boy that she has to stir the potion for three days straight, you know, morning and night, he winds up getting burnt. A bubble pops up on his finger, puts his finger in his mouth. He becomes the smartest, the most talented boy in all the world, right? Her plan did not go the way that she wanted it to. But because they're magic, and this is an ancient Welsh tale, he turns himself into a seed of corn, and she, a kernel of corn, and she turns herself into a hen. She eats him, she becomes pregnant, and winds up giving birth to the most talented, blessed child. So she gets what she wants, but in the most roundabout way. That's going to be what happens, Taurus. We're going to find, because we're master manifestors, we're going to find that we get what we want, but in the most roundabout, you know, kind of, are you kidding me? Way. And so that's going to be something to look at. The repeat of the number two here, you're better in a pair. As much as you want to work just on your own, you're better connected with others. So be aware of that. The two of wands here, a door is closing. A door is closing. You're seeing things more intensely and you're going to think like, what the heck is this? What the heck is going on here? That's supposed to be what's opened. And spirit's like, no, trust me. So when you hear doors close and you, you will, in your dreams, there's going to be a sense of like a door slamming or, you know, there's, there's going to be something like that. And it's going to happen in conjunction with something powerful ending. Okay. In your life. Now it's either going to be in a dream or you hear it on the television, but I'm just, I'm hearing a door slam or you slam a door, you get so frustrated. And that's a day where like all this toxic energy that's in you, you know, falls away and you see yourself stepping into new power and you're like, why did I even have to go through that? Because you're stepping out of the sludge that is part of this world. And it brings us to the hermit. It turns us inward, right? It turns us inward. Now the hermit reversed, right? We're not connecting 
very well at Virgo energy. So if we have that in our chart, be mindful of this. But also, we don't want to turn inward and see ourselves. We want to turn inward and connect with everybody else. This is a time where it will be a challenge, but it will also be a huge blessing to turn inward, see what we want, see what we desire, and let ourselves move forward in a knowledge of what is the dream that guides us. What is it that we really want in this world? Because we're looking at something that is almost deemed like wishing on stars, like not wishing on stars, like just impossible. It's like, you might as well say, I want to wear the crown jewels, right? It's not going to happen. It's not going to be, but we're going to find that something that seems impossible, well, it starts to become possible. It starts to become possible during this clever, you know, intuitive moon. And it makes us clever and intuitive. So let's see what the moon has to say for herself. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels. And spirit guides, angels. And spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels. And spirit guides, angels. Okay, so what's really interesting here is that we start off with a new start is coming reverse. So we're going to see the power of this full moon go from full moon to full moon. We're not going to see it reach a crescendo during the new moon in June, but it's going to be from full moon in June to full moon in July. So be aware of that. We don't really see a new start coming. We see ourselves blossoming. We see where the soil has been planted, what we have been going after. We're blossoming into ourselves, what we desire, what we want, what we're looking for. We're becoming much more aware. Now, what do you need to release in order to call in your abundance? And that's what the moon is asking, because there is a need to celebrate yourself, to move forward, to see yourself going after what you want, what you desire, what's important to you. And this brings us, you know, to that question, what do you need to release in order for abundance to come into your life? And it brings us then, and you're going to find the moon will ask you this a lot during this time. It's like, okay, what do you need to let go of? You're very close to achieving your goals. You hunger for that. You hunger for your goals to be achieved. It can be something that's so important that it can tend to diminish everything else. So be aware of that. There, there's a sense of, of really, really, really striving, like almost feeling like you're, you're held back, right? You, you've been kept starving in order to, to get what you want. So here, just know that that hunger is so intense. I do see that. It's almost like, oh, I haven't eaten in a really long time, but that's not the case. There, there, the case here is that I'm so driven. This is so what I want that it takes up all my thoughts, all my desire. So be aware, okay, that you're very close to it, but it becomes all consuming. And that can also be because we're having a bit of difficulty entering into the spirit world, you know, having the veil lifted from our eyes, seeing what it is that we truly want. It's a time to give rather than take. No, it's not. It's a time for balance, but it's a time to give and take. And it brings us to a place of peace. We can have a tendency as Torians to give and give and give, you know, especially when we love people, especially when we want them to succeed. Here, we need to have that balance and we need to follow peace for ourselves and what peace means for us. It brings us then to look at the big picture because a lot is changing, but look at your big goals. This is the full moon in Sagittarius. You have this full moon shining forward. You know, this is also the strawberry full moon. And if you've ever had ripened strawberries, like homegrown in the garden. They are the most delicious things I have ever tasted. So here it's looking at the big picture, but also seeing what's delicious, seeing what's guiding you forward, seeing what, you know, is, is joyous because a lot is changing. And as a lot changes, we're looking at what we've been focusing on, what we really want, what we really desire. And it's like, is that really what I want? Is that really where I need to be? Is that really what I desire? You know, what's right for me? We need to look inward. We're going to be trying to find a lot of the answers externally. They're not going to be there. They're going to be internal. It moves us then to our subconscious energy to be mindful of. And that's the Ace of Swords. That's the Ace of Swords. I was, I don't know what spirit had me say earlier, where I was like, oh, I'm surprised the Ace of Swords isn't here. Because I looked down 
And it's like, it's cutting through. This is a time cutting through a lot of nonsense. Okay. And there's also a clarity of voice. You have to be very mindful because our tongues can be very sharp during this time, Taurus. And we can be very intense and we can be very driven and a, we're hungry. We're hungry for our success, but we can also just be rather frustrated, you know, at the way things are, are moving or at the, the twists and turns that life has thrown in our path as we're getting what we want. So just know that. And the spirit is saying here, subconsciously, one of our challenges is to embrace our voice, is to cut through to what we truly want, what we truly desire, and what's truly important to us. It moves us then to our subconscious spirit message. And this is mindful. Be mindful. Be aware of what you're thinking about. Be aware of what energy is calling to you. Be mindful of your presence. Also, be mindful of whether you're you know, in a positive energy mood or a negative energy mood and what you can expect from yourself. That's going to be very important as well. Our subconscious tarot message is the king of cups, water sign energy, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer. All right, we have Scorpio, right? The south node is in Scorpio. Okay, that's again, the collective past. And we're going to be seeing, you know, secrets and toxic energy coming to the surface. We're going to be able to withstand that storm, you know, to traverse our way forward, to say, what do I love? What am I healing from? You know, how am I moving myself forward? There is a real sense here, especially with the six of wands also coming into play, that I need to be, you know, the ruler of myself. I need to own my actions, own what I desire, own who I am, and keep on actively moving forward to where I need to be for me. It brings us then to our subconscious Luna message, which is it's time to release negativity. This is reversed. So we kind of feel very attached to our negative energy and fruition. This moon is going to bring to fruition our question marks. You know, a lot of what we desire, but also a lot of what we're questioning, we're looking deeper at, we're feeling overwhelmed by. Here, we have to release the negativity. The moon is telling us we're having a hard time with that. We might not see the energy that's holding us back as negative. We might think, oh no, that's the tenacity, not the tenacity, but like the obstinance, the stubbornness, the, the, the fierceness I need in order to succeed. So here, just be very, very mindful about this, that it can be holding us back in a way that is overwhelming. We can be seeing it as a positive and the moon is like, why? You're, you're, just, you're just soaking yourself in negativity right? It's kind of like, you know, when they say like soak the fruit or, or soak, you know, to in like brandy or something like that, if you're making some sort of a pie, I don't even know where this is coming from, but I, I feel like somebody who's watching either makes pies or knows this because I certainly don't, but like you have to soak it to take in, it's kind of like a marinade, but I'm seeing it more for fruit. And here it's like, okay, you don't want to soak in that because if you eat that, if you eat the apple, just as the apple, it's delicious. But if you soak in, in, you know, the brandy or something like that, it's, it's, it's not anymore. So be aware of this. We don't want to soak in something that maybe in moderation is delicious, but, or, or good for us, or, or, you know, makes us feel good or, or something like that. But too much of it, it's like, it's, it's too intense. It's too powerful. Be aware. I don't know who that message is for, because that was the oddest way for spirit to explain it. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right, Taurus, I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I am sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the power, intensity, and beauty of this time and of ourselves. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Taurus. May blessings and prosperity always be with you. Have a blessed moon. God bless. I love you all. Bye.